guitar practice session 10 26 24. These are relatively sloppy practice sessions where I practice whatever I think I need to be working on, then give you a recap so you get an idea of what you're getting into. This, of course, being that recap, hoping the practice sessions generate a routine, help me to verbalize the things that I'm trying to learn, possibly provide information to others learning similar things, possibly also providing for feedback. If anybody sees a better way to do the things that I'm doing here, I do think presenting information is useful, even if nobody listening because it helps to kind of orientate things in our minds which we otherwise would not do so if anybody wants to take these resources make their own practice sessions such as with the use of the worksheet don't feel uh, feel free to do so don't worry about plagiarism we'll try to provide those for you you can do what you want with them they are structured from the standpoint of us playing the guitar from behind the guitar as though we took that guitar imprinted the strings on the page here so that we have the top or low heavy string on top top to bottom left to right same orientation from our perspective from behind the guitar i'm spinning my guitar around on the screen as well so it looks like i'm left-handed but basically the idea is that you're looking at my guitar with the same orientation as the worksheet from the perspective of you behind your guitar so we can focus our time on the intervals and rather than kind of spinning the guitar around in circles in our mind until we get dizzy and lay on the floor because we're worried that we're going to fall down and break our our noggin or something like that so this time we're going to be looking at the lydian mode once again continuing on basically to what we started last time i'm trying to get in my own mind an overview as to why this is important so i don't get too lost basically in the weeds of learning something that that i that's too abstract so what i start off doing is reiterating in my mind why this is useful so i'll give a quick recap here what we do is we go from this tab back to the related modes tab and i go over the idea that i want to learn the modes so i'm going to use this mode and then go to the other modes and use the major key as our point of reference it's useful to label or number the modes to be able to do that i then want to be able to make chord constructions no matter what mode i am in using the major key as a reference not only knowing that the one four five are major chords and the two three and six are minor chords but going beyond that to the 7, 9, 11, and 13, which is a little bit more confusing. So I go into why that is in essence. And then we're thinking then about in prior days, we talked about the intervals for the chord construction of the one chord of a major scale. And that's gonna be our Rosetta Stone once again. And then I'm gonna think about the major modes, in, in this case, the four and the five as they're compared to the one and determine which of those intervals are different. So if I know the baseline, the one, this is my Rosetta Stone, this is what I compare at least the major chords to. Let's look at the other two major chords, the four and the five, which I could also call Lydian chord construction and Mixolydian chord construction, which intervals are different. The different intervals are the seven and the 11. We're here working on the 11, which we can say is equivalent to, in essence, the, the, the fourth, of a if if we look at it as compared to the ionian so then once i recognize that that's a chord i can then jump over to our lydian over here and look at the lydian chord construction specifically focusing in on that one interval the 11th which i know is different than the major so i want to emphasize in my mind i'm looking at that situation which is the fourth of the major scale or anytime i'm on that lydian chord construction no matter what mode i'm in that's when i have the opportunity to do something a little bit different which is which is to add the augmented 11 which i can't do if i was playing the one or the 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 five because it wouldn't fit in the same key so i try to reorientate that whole concept in my mind and then we start where we left off last time i think on like this c or somewhere down here and look at the the relationships of this 11 as compared to that note and then we try to add that to a chord construction trying to build the one three five plus the 11 and if i can't get the one three five i drop the five and if i can't get that i drop the three and see if i can get the the one five eleven 
to try to think of it in context in a core generation you know context which is one way that we might uh, look at it and uh, that's basically it I tell a joke more of a rant kind of joke it's got some politics in it so if that's going to bother you you can uh, skip that one uh, if you want but you know I'm practicing my rant and my rant slash joke uh, process and so that's basically it Continuing on with our discussion of the Lydian mode, which is a major mode, comparing the Lydian mode to the major scale, otherwise known as the Ionian mode, looking at the one distinctive interval of the Lydian mode compared to the Ionian mode or major scale, that being from a chord construction perspective, the 11th, which from our perspective is basically the same thing as the fourth of the scale, which we'll talk more about shortly, noting that it has a sixth note away, which we're going to call here an augmented fourth, or you can call it an augmented eleventh, which is written here as like a diminished fifth, which has the same six note distance. However, we really would want to call it a fourth here because that's what we need in our construction of the intervals for the Lydian scale, which we'll talk more about lately or later. But before we do, let's first uh, give a quick recap of what we're doing, our overall project, so we have that framework in our mind and then be thinking how this might fit into it in like a practical way. So if I go back on over to the related modes, this is the major scale and the key of C major, but I'm really just thinking in terms of major scale and related modes, how do they fit together? What is uh, the relationship between them? And from a practical standpoint, we usually learn the major scale and then use it to then build other scales like the Dorian, the Phrygian, and most commonly the minor scale, otherwise known as the Aeolian. So the major scale is going to be like our Rosetta Stone, our point of reference. Now, I'd like to be able to man maneuver between all those different modes as easily as possible. And I'm going to do that by using the major key as a point of reference. So what we, to, what we want to do then is give the relative positions for the, the major key, seven relative positions, which will change depending on the modes that we are in. That's why they're relative. And... Uh, we and that's seven notes out of 12 and then we have our notes over here which are in the key of C and we're using the key of C because there's no sharps and flats but the same concept applies to all major scales from the perspective of the relative positions that's why we're trying to look at it from an abstract perspective which will be applicable in all major scales and then we usually learn from a practical perspective when do we construct from these relative positions a major chord or a minor chord thinking first about triads triads are built from the one three five the one uh th three five skipping every other note within the within the scale so so then if we do that if we if we start from each note in the scale and we just go around a circle and skip every other note building triads we happen to end up with what we call the major triads and minor triads and we start to memorize that i can build a major chord from the one four five and i can just know that right i don't have to rebuild it in my mind i'm just like oh it has a major and the two and the three and the six are minor chord constructions the seven is diminished with a minor third and a flat fifth so if i memorize that then i can just say okay i'm going to play through my chords and then i'm just going to build this three note triad I'm going to play through my scale and then build this three note triad and the way i build the triad is i can just say well it's going to have a same relative position one same relative position five but the third is the thing that will be distinctive between a major and minor the major third having a four note away major third the minor having a three note away minor third so that's great that gives us the baseline but I'd like to be able to go on to the 7, 9, 11, and 13. And I'd also like to go down to the Dorian and say I'd like to, to play in Dorian and then also use the same uh, idea of taking any note and constructing at least a major or minor triad. I can't do that as easily because I'd have to then memorize which, which are the relative positions here that build a major or minor for the purposes of the Dorian. So how can we, how can we do that? Well, I, it'd be great if I could memorize it, but 
I could use the, the major key as my point of reference and say, well, if this Dorian is related to the major, then I could I can use the relative positions of the major as my Rosetta Stone because I know the one, four, five are major chords, the two, three, and six are minor chords. So how can I convert this to the relative positions of the major? Well, if I give an absolute numbering system to the modes based on the relative positions of the major key, the Dorian would be the second mode. So that's what it means to be the second mode here, right? So the second mode, if I build a scale on the second mode with the same notes as the Ionian, but I just start on the second one, I end up with a Dorian mode. So if I know the Dorian is basically relative position number two, from my major scale perspective, I can use a little formula to figure out any other of the relative seven positions as related to the major scale. What would that formula be? Well, if I'm on the Dorian, right, it's going to be one step away. It's the second mode, but if I'm on Ionian, it's one step away. So the formula is whatever the number in absolute numbers modes that I am in, in this case, mode number two, Dorian, minus one to get one step away from the, from the first mode or the, or the Ionian, plus whatever I'm looking at, the fourth of the Dorian, for example, would be four plus one would give us five. And so I can say that five then is the relative position of the major key. That would be the fifth, which if I know the one, four, five would build a major chord, I know that then that would be a major chord construction. The four would be a major chord construction for the Dorian. So that's, that's one thing that I wanna get down. So how do I do that? I have to apply a numbering system to, in essence, the modes which is just based on the relative positions of the major scale. And that allows me to kind of orientate myself no matter what mode I'm in to at least after a little bit of thought, be able to think of what the relative position in the major scale is. And if I know where to build my major or minor chords and those relative positions, I can then, I can then build a major or minor on any of the modes. So note what we're doing here is that I'm giving an absolute numbering system to the modes. So, so I'm not going to go down here in the Dorian and say the Phrygian is, is like relative position two. I'm going to say, no, the Phrygian is mode three, which is kind of a convention, but it's based on the major key. And that allows me to, to tie into the, my Rosetta Stone, the major key to look at the relative position. So that's one thing I'm trying to do. The other thing I'm trying to do is to say, well, what about the 7, 9, 11, and 13 to add more than just the triad? So a lot of people, when I, when I think that I, I'm playing in a major scale or any scale, if I determine that the 1, 4, 5 are going to be the major chord constructions, I used to think, and you can think this way, that I'm just going from the 1 of, of the major, and then when I go to the 5, it's the 5 or if I go to the four, it is the four of the major, but I'm really like making it the number one and playing like a major scale as if it was uh, the one, right? You could kind of think of it, or, or if I go to the five, for example, I could think of it as, well, if I go to this tab, I'm kind of, now I'm going to the five, which is a G, right? And I'm, I'm kind of like making it as though it's the one and all of the relative positions the one through 13 will have the same intervals as the one of, of what I started on, which was the key of C. So I could think that way and that'll sound cool because then you're using the parallel, you're using a complete parallel, but you're actually changing from chord to, you're actually changing from mode to mode, from scales to scales, right? You're not playing everything in the same scale. You're moving from scale to scale, which is kind of what we do like in the blues does that to, to a large degree because it's playing parallel constructions, not really in the same key kind of thing. Or you can play in the same key, which means that I'm not going to be, when I go down to the four or five, even though I have the one, the same one, three, five, I'm not thinking of myself as going to like the, the major D I'm, I'm sorry, the, where am I? I'm not thinking about going to I'm in the A. Yeah, I'm not thinking about, wait, I'm in the wrong thing. Let's do this one. I'm not thinking about if I go to the four that I'm going to like the major F or the major G. 
I'm thinking about it as the four chord, which is built in the same notes that are in the C, which happen to have the same one, three, five, as though I went to an F major, but may have a different seven, nine, 11, and 13, right? And so that's where it gets wonky because the seven, nine, 11, and 13 don't follow the same rules as the triad in that all the relative positions for the major will be the same and all the relative positions for the minor will have just that one difference. So the project is that I would like to then say, what are all the seven, nine, 11, and 13 relative positions uh, to, to the one for the one chord? And then I compare the two other uh, the, the, the two other major modes to that. The two other major modes are the Lydian and the Mixolydian. You might just call them the four and the five, but you might as well start thinking the four and the five are equivalent to the Lydian and Mixolydian. Why? Because that allows us to then go to the Lydian, the Mixolydian mode and think of myself as in the Mixolydian mode. When I'm in the Mixolydian mode, I am basically playing the fifth a, a structure that is from the fifth of the major scale. Again, the major scale isn't actually like the thing that everything else was built from as though it's outside of the picture. The major scale is actually just one node in the, in the tapestry of like, of, of everything, right? It's not like really special, just like the location of Earth isn't exactly really special and just in terms of location with regards to special relativity, right? Because we could be anywhere and do physics, but it happens to be where we are at. And so we're going to be doing measurements from uh, that particular point. It is special because it has a lot of special characteristics to it, but just in terms of a point in space, it's all, it's just one node, same kind of things happening here. But I can use it as a point of reference. I need to pick something to use as a point of reference. Okay, so that's gonna be my idea. That's the idea then. So then so then, if I learn all of the relative positions for the seven, nine, 11, and 13, those relative positions, I'll be able to play all over the fretboard. And then I need to know when I go to the, to the, to the four and the five, what are the differences then where, where I'd still be playing in the same key, the same notes in the same key uh, on those positions. And there's a couple ways I can do that. I could use, I could learn all of the relative positions for the Lydian and Mixolydian modes, or the shortcut is just to say, okay, I know the Lydian and Mixolydian are major modes. Therefore they have the same major chord construction, the same relative one, three, five, which of the seven, nine, 11, and 13 are different? Which ones do I have to watch out for? If I learn the seven, nine, 11, and 13, in other words, in the major key, then which, where doesn't it apply? Because it will apply in most cases. Well, in the Lydian, it won't apply on the 11, which is what we're working on now. The 11, we can think of as equivalent to the fourth, which we'll talk about more shortly but that's the one that's gonna be distinct. That means that when I learn the 11 for the major mode, I can play that for the major, I can play it for the Mixolydian, the one, four, five, but I can't play the same 11 for the four, which is in essence the Lydian. And then the seven is the other one that has a distinctive for the Mixolydian. So that means when I learn the interval for the seven related to the to to the Ionian or the first, then I can apply that out to the to the Lydian, uh, but not to the Mixolydian. And notice I have to kind of keep the majors separate from the minors here. So I'm going to be comparing the majors to the majors, and then we'll learn the main minor Aeolian, and compare the minor modes to the minor modes Dorian and Phrygian. That's kind of the how most the most logical way to construct it. I think the simplest way to construct it. So that's our idea here. So now we're, so now we're, we've learned, I've learned these intervals, or at least I practiced those intervals. And now I want to practice the Lydian, the fourth, which I know has that distinctive 11. So now I'm looking at the exception to the rule, which I could think of if I'm in the key of C or any other related mode where I'm playing mode number four chord, right? A chord based on the modal uh, Lydian 
mode, then then I have a distinctive 11th. And so I want to know when I can kind of throw that in. And I can use the same concept if I was actually playing in Lydian, right? So what I want to do then is take these, these numbering system up top is based on the chord construction, which skips every other note. So if I unhide these, right click unhide, I've got the scale one, two, three, four, five, six. The scale, if I look at it this way, is the same scale I have here, right? C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then it should go back to C, but right, it, it, right. And then C, D, E, F, G, A, B, it's the same. But when I look at it from the chords, we skip every other note to build the chord, one, three, five, and seven. And then instead of going back to the two around in a circle, we call the two a nine as though we're playing on a piano lin linearly, but we're going up an octave. But I'm not wanting to think about it as going up an octave because on the guitar, I can't easily go up an octave. So I don't really think about octaves as clearly as maybe I should, but rather I'm just gonna say that the nine is equivalent to the two. And then the 11, the 11 is in essence equivalent to the four. The 13 is in essence equivalent to the six. Therefore, the two, four, six are redundant when looking at it this way, which is why I hide them. And, but when I come, so that's going to be the idea. So then I hide the two and then the four and then the six. Hide those, but hopefully that allows us to see that these mode, this is just the scale. This is just the Mixolydian scale that is the same as the C scale that just starts on we're just doing the same thing, but we're starting on, you know, the five. All right. Uh, so that's the idea. So now, so now I want to go to the Lydian and look at the Lydian as though it's the one, because because then I can just focus in on 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 the eleven. So I'm going to go to this worksheet over here. So now we're just looking at the Lydian mode, and I want to be able to to pick any note on the guitar and think of it as my root note, and then be able to find the eleven from it that's the Lydian 11, which is different from what it would be if it was the major scale 11. It's an augmented 11, which again has this, we can think of as equivalent to the fourth for all intensive purposes, which I'm not sure if I say that right. All intensive purposes <laughs> is the fourth. And then, uh, and, and, uh, and it has a, a sixth note away augmented fourth, which is said incorrectly here because it says diminished fifth, which has the same distance of six notes, but should be an augmented fourth. Why? Because we have the first, second, third. We need the fourth here because this is relative position four. So that's why we have that funky naming condition issue that comes up oftentimes in the Western music system. All right, so that's gonna be uh, the idea. So then, and so I'm gonna pick a note somewhere in the middle of the guitar and then I could I can systematically just look at how many how many ways can I have an interval well there's only going to be one per string right there's there it is on this string here 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 it is on this string and here it is on this string that's it now we left off last time like here so I'm going to do something like on this string maybe I'll go into like the A and so I'll look at this uh, that's the F uh, the A is on the top or maybe I'll just look at this A. So I'll just look at that. And I think that's where we left off last time and we'll do all of uh, those comparisons. All right, that was a long intro. Okay, that's what we're gonna do. All right, now now also, uh, <laughs> uh, I'd like to get, and then I can think about once I have the interval, I can think about, well, could I add the, 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 the one, three, five, and then add that? And I'll think about the chord that I can add the 11 to. And if I can't add the one, three, five, could I, could I drop the five and get the one and the three? And if I can't get the, the one and the three, could I drop the, the three and get the five? That's how I'm gonna think about the chord construction. Okay, so now we're on this A. Let's go above it first. We'll start up going up top. So when I go above it, I need to find, I can find that mathematically, which I know annoys people, but music is about relationships, okay? It's about relationships. And I'm not talking Days of Our Lives or Soap Opera, whatever this cool new soap opera. I'm not talking like Ahsoka, like Star Wars soap opera relationships or something. I'm talking about numerical relationships. 
that's what the that's what the thing is about, right? So so we're saying it's ratios. It's all ratios for crying out loud. I know that's that's frustrating to people, but for I mean I'm telling you, it's useful. So <laughs> so if you can so if you get so if I say that this is a if I'm looking for the eleven node away, uh, I'm sorry the six node away augmented 11 which is equivalent to the six note away augmented fourth which is written incorrectly as the six note away diminished fifth which has the same distance the inverse of that is actually 12 minus six which is still six so this is the funny one that's kind of like right in the middle you get six either way so the inverse is still six so if i go up here that would be negative five i would call it and then negative six boom there it is so that means that if i played if i played uh, from uh, where am I here to here top to bottom it would be an an augmented 11 or an augmented fourth or you can call it a diminished fifth if I played from bottom to the top it would also be a six note away augmented 11 or augmented fourth or six note away diminished fifth whatever you want to call it it's that dissonancy sound either way you play it Okay, so that's gonna be that's gonna be that and then what can I add to that well I have a nice third right here so I have a third so I could do that okay and then I have a fifth back here so I could grab that so I could go do do at the same time, it's a little hard. Not to... All right, all right. And then I got what else do we have? We've got a fifth up here, so I could be like, I could do, 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 and then here. Is that right? It's on the nine. No, it's not right. I was like, that's something wrong with that. There it is. Kind of like that sound though, but yeah, that was the. That's because it's the eleven. It's a major eleven. Okay. That's where it should be. Okay. And then what else can I do with that? Uh, let's leave it at that. Moving on. Let's go up to the next one. Up here, I need a six note distance. So five, ten, nine, eight, seven, six. Six note distance to the eleven. Okay, what can I do with that? Well, I have a, I have a five, like a, let's try to bar this five off. So now I've got a an augmented 11. Wait a sec. fifth root okay what else could I do with that I've got a fifth here so I could go that's kind of a tough reach it's doable Let's go uh, on the same string. I could go up here, six strings, one, two, three, four, five, six, which I can't see too good because it's across the divide. 
but I'll put it out there. We can see it enough. So it's like boom. So this is the one where I'm reaching. Can't quite. I can almost reach that higher up on the register. Do a hammer on. It. So if you're if you're at a on electric, you might be able to do a hammer on. But I've been practicing this one. Where again, this is the one where it's like if I'm gonna if I'm gonna reach out there, reaching past my normal reaching shape, I'm gonna try to play each finger. So I'm doing kind of like alternate picking, I guess, if you want to try to do it as quickly as I can by, by reaching out. Which is kind of wonky because again if I was only reaching to this one I've been practicing using this fingering which means I'm I'm reaching this way with this finger but if it was only a third out then I would do it this way so I can hammer on more hard than I can do that way so I don't, again, I'm not totally sure that's like the best way to be doing things, to be doing things. I could like try a shuffle pattern out there. That doesn't yeah what are you doing leave leave it leave that moving on this is not the mixolydian scale let's go down here this is the one that would probably come to mind most so there's that diminished sound right there it's going to give you very distinctive tension whenever you see that shape unless it's crossed over the fault line the tectonic plate division I have a fifth I can add above it if I wanted to. Oh wait, I'm on the wrong I'm on the wrong thing. I should have played it over here. Sorry about that. Could play it like that. So I'm barring off this E A in here. Probably the easiest way to do it. And then uh, I could say like if I was playing my normal for shape here would be here here and here right if so if I was playing like my normal shape from here this would be a D shape uh, a major because the other side would be here but if I don't play that I'll just uh, not ring that one out so if I was playing this and if I was in the key of a major key and then this was the fourth of the major I could throw in like this one right I'm going from that E back to the diminished now again that's gonna still sound pretty uh, uh, tensiony but it's at least in the same key right so you can kind of play with it whereas if I was in if I wasn't on the fourth of a major if I was on the fifth of the major in the mixolydian it wouldn't be there. I couldn't play that. At least it wouldn't be in the same key. That's the point. So, so if I'm happen to be on the fourth, I'm playing something. I'm on the fourth, or I'm on the Lydian mode, the chord that is equivalent to the Lydian, which would be like the fourth of the major. I could try kind of throwing that in and getting a different kind of feel for it, and it should work, although still tensiony. It's kind of like the idea what I'm thinking at least that's what I'm thinking I could be wrong doesn't normally happen because I'm like right about everything even when I'm wrong that doesn't make any sense that's because well, whatever so here's the a one uh, augmented 11 and a five. Cool. 
All right. All right. Let's bring it back here. That would be the distance. I'm going six notes again as the distance, whether I go up or below five. And then out here would be 10 because of the kink in the tune in the fault line, the tectonic plate of the fretboard, nine, eight, seven, six. So that makes sense. So we're going here back to the four. Three, four right there. It's, uh, wait a second. Now I'm on this string. Here. Is that right? Yeah. Sounds right. Okay, I can then add, this is the interesting, this is, a, this is possibly a useful one here because I have the, this is my three and this is my five. So I've got that nice shape, which sometimes I play this way. So that would be a, another way to play my A major where I'm just putting the five on top of it. But then if I happen to be on the fourth or whatever the, the Lydian mode of my projection, I can bring this back. That's interesting with this shape too, because I can also bring this one back, maybe. It's kind of hard to do. You could do that. This one down here is a nice easy slide. So note again, you can only do that on the fourth of the major when you're playing that major A. You couldn't do it on the major C. It's not gonna be the same, which would be like up here. And if I was playing like the C, I couldn't just like slide that back. So that's the point. So, so you get, okay. Let's do the next one. Uh, bringing this down here to the 11. So I got that one. Here's the five. So that might be useful, five. Could be useful. So if I was playing my normal, like D shaped A chord here, which would look like this, I could slide this up to here. Wait. Now hold on. Hold on. This is that. No, I wasn't playing it right. Dang it. There it is. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. So now if I was playing my normal D-shaped A, which would be this, I'm all whacked up. I could slide this out here. So maybe I can play this D shape like this, might make it easier. Uh, that might be useful. At least on the higher registers, that'd be easier to do maybe. Okay. Anyways, let's go to the next one down, which is, let's go to like, this sharp, do I want to play on like a sharp? Let's go to like, uh, I could just go to the C again. Let's just go to a C. Cause that's, all right. So we'll do that one. All right, before we do that, I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do a joke. This is kind of half rant, half joke, half rant, half joke, kind of crosses over a couple topics, but I'm tying it together cause I'm trying to be able to link my material together. 
you know, it's got some politics because we're in the political season. So you might want to fast forward if that's uh, an issue and drink some coffee here. All right, here we go. Practice session joke. It's got some gut feel ring to it, but I can't, I don't sound like gut feel. He's got a whole different kind of thing, but I tried to put the, ep, the epilogue or what does he call it? Uh, the, the, I don't know, whatever. It's a little bit of that. Here we go. The Democratic Party are strong believers in the idea all men are created equal. Unless, of course, those men have any physical, emotional, or behavioral differences. In which case, we need to list out those differences, the most superficial first, focus all our attention on those differences, and then construct our law first and foremost based on those superficial differences. Except in the case of gender differences, because because there are, no, there are no gender differences, except when there are. So we need to make sure the law does not take into account gender into account, except when it does, which makes perfect sense, except that it doesn't. Anyways, how, how is it that Hollywood, uh, Hollywood is messing up the new Blade Vampire Hunter movie? You know, they had to, basically they had to cancel it or, or delay it looks like indefinitely. This is like the Blade Vampire Hunter movie. It's crazy. I mean, honestly, you would think Blade movie would be a money-making, like, in, like it'd, be a, it'd be a money-making open court, nobody in your path, bank-making slam dunk, you know? I mean, it, it had, it's got like a built-in fan base. Identity boxes have been checked. That means there's no DEI roadblocks that are going to get in your way of making the film. It's got the gritty, dark, modern, anti-hero story. A story that script writers generally like because they really like playing with the question of moral ambiguity kind of situation. They're throwing it in everything as far as I can tell. I mean, I mean how much are you willing to bet? that the story behind the, the inability to make a Blade movie goes something like this. You know, they're in the writer room with 500 writers. 500 writers! Because due to union minimum writer number requirements, that's how many they needed in the room. And then, and then as they review the script, a script most likely written for the most part by chat GTP rather than the 500 committee of writers, some jerk writer was like, yeah, well, that's great. You know, the boxes are checked. It's got a built-in fan base, yada, yada, money-making gold mine. But Blade, Blade's not gay. I mean, can't, can't we make Blade gay too? And then, and then the whole thing turned into another woke trash fire due to the fact that nobody could tell the crazy guy no because he happened to have more woke points than 90% of the room of writers that are only there because they had to be because the union thing said they needed 500 writers in the room to agree on every decision to write a script, which is crazy. I mean, honestly, like, if you, if you can't even do a Blade movie because of woke DEI union-made roadblocks, it's, it's over. It's over. Just outsource the projects to like Arizona or something, Hollywood, because because Hollywood is dead. All right, it's de the, the the crazy levels are unprecedented for even for Hollywood. It's unprecedented. It's off the Richter scale, I tell you. You know the the Richter scale has been unmoored by the craziness shockwaves knocked off the table and is now lying broken on its side while still drawing little squiggly lines on the floor as if to as if to say sos it's given an sos signal to the world by the sheer crazy frantic squiggles that, that are meaningless just on the floor from from the richter scale squiggly lines about as meaningless as like a as like economic data from china Squiggly lines as meaningless as the current administration explanation of inflation with the use of like rainbow colored Venn diagrammed shaped like a choo-choo train for no dang data driven reason. 
I mean, it's ridiculous. It's the same crazy crap every time. Doesn't anyone notice this? I feel like I'm living in crazy town. Honestly, we, 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 we need to go back to when script write, writing was done by one dude or dude with passion and a vision. So, why? Because script writing done by committee, script writing done by committee sucks. Period. All right, that's all I got. That was that was my half rant. All right, back to work here. So now we're on the C and let's go above it. So we're looking for a six note away from that C. So that would be, this would be five and six. So that shape, it's kind of interesting. This one is actually kind of easy to find like the main shape because this relationship uh, where, where I see like, I'm just noticing this kind of myself as a revelation. So that's what I'm trying to, so like these, Two of revelation has come to me here straight from so, so this shape whether it's going from the top to the bottom or the bottom to the top it's still six notes away so because usually obviously if i if i looked at any other relationship like if i looked at the relationship between these two uh you know going from top to bottom would be a a, a fourth five note away perfect fourth and bottom to top seven note away perfect fifth but when I look at this shape, I can look at it from top to bottom. It's symmetrical in that way. I can look at it from top to bottom or bottom to top, and it's six notes away, which I could call a, in this case, augmented 11th, augmented fourth, or it's the same distance as a diminished uh, fifth. All right, muy interessante. Revelation has come to me there. Doesn't, not very, uh, possibly useful revelation, but still, I take any uh, revelation that I uh, that I'm graced to uh, have. So, <laughs> so we're gonna say this is gonna be a, uh, a diminished eleven, one, and three. Okay, and so that's useful. And then I've got then a five down here so i could say this is the g and i could pick up that d while i'm at it which is a nine so now i just pick up the nine while i'm at it because hey why not that's the nine no. Por que no? Let's go up uh, this way. Next string. Six notes away. This would be negative five, negative ten, nine, eight, seven, six. So we're reaching out here. Cool. I've got a five right above it so I can do my bar, my bar chord thing which is interesting because I could bar all the way down here. I could bar anything I want, but I've got, that's like my A-shaped uh, C that usually would lean back this way, my bar shape, but if I lean it forward, then I can grab on top of it that 11. Diminished 11. And again, I can only do that if I was playing the fourth of like a major key or in the Lydian, wherever the Lydian lands, whatever mode I'm in. A little tension on top of my C. A lot of tension. Hermosa. Okay. <laughs> Let's go to this one. There's no way I'm reaching that. Are you crazy? Come on. Come on, man. It's ridiculous. Let's go to, let's do the next one up. So it's be negative five, negative 10, 15. And then I could bring it down 15 minus 12 is five minus two, which is three, four, five, six. So I can reach, so I'm not gonna be able to reach that. Uh, what am I doing? Why am I out here? Wait a second. Now I got all 
out of whack again. Why? What was I doing? I'm out here now. I'm on the sea. Hopefully I wasn't doing something wacky for too long. Clearly I'm a little disorientated. Disorientated. I've, I was thinking of disorientated as a word for a joke. Comedians, to be a comedian, you've got to be a little disorientated because, because you need to orientate yourself towards dissing stuff because that's what comedians do. They diss things. So it's going to be a little dis... Okay, it needs work. So you need to be a little disorientated if you're a comedian because you have to orientate yourself towards towards dissing. That's just a stupid pun. It's a... Okay. Hold on a second. That's not funny. Okay. I think it's got potential. I can make it funny. I just need to make a good story around it. Let's go this way. Uh, now we're out. Here to the 11. That's not, that's a G. Dude, I'm all messed up. Maybe if you stop trying to tell jokes, you can do it right. No one wants to hear, who, who has time for jokes, man? Get serious, loser. Get your head in the game. Okay. I need to... It helps my mind relax. I... Uh, so I can play... So that's the one where I can practice my... One finger per note. It's pretty much all I can do with that. Moving on. Moving on over. Moving on over. This would be five up here and then six because of the fault line, because of the plate tectonics, the shift. So it looks like a perfect fifth, but no. It's a it's an augmented 11 or an augmented four, six notes away. All right. So I should be able to do something with that. I've got a, a uh, five above it here, so I can bar that off. So that's kind of interesting, because I could play this C like this. So there's my three notes for the C where I'm playing this one, and I could grab on top of that like this C, which is kind of like a G shape from a cage system, because the G would be like out here. And then the bottom half would be like here. But then, but then I could be like, now I'm going to throw in, instead of that C, I'm going to throw in the, uh, I'm going to throw in that one, the 11. So I'll be like, which again, you can only do that on like the fourth. Uh, if fourth of the major scale or the Lydian mode, so I couldn't do that if I was if if I was playing the C as the one, right? So that's kind of good to know because that could be kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah, right, right, dude. That's. Cool. All right. So then I have this. Could do that. This would be the one augmented 11, augmented four, six note away. And then the five. All right. Uh -huh. Let's go to the next one down. Let's go to this one. So now I've got the C and the two. So right under this C, I've got, so here's the one where I've got like this, this, and this, 
would be my normal C shape again. And then I could just shift down. And just a way to look at this where I should be emphasizing, I think, more to myself is that, of course, the augmented 11 or the augmented fourth is one step behind the perfect fifth. So I can find the yellow one, my perfect fifth, and just slide it down if there's to get that augmented fourth. That's what I could do. All right, let's go down to the E. E, let's do this one. All right, let's go above that one, looking for a six note away, either way, because it's symmetrical. So there would be five and then, well, I, no, wait, five would be here because of the kink in the tuning and then six. So because of this fault line, there's the shape. So now because of the fault line, I have my E there, it would be like this. So from top to bottom, it looks like it should be a perfect fifth away, but no, it's a flat fifth or augmented four. And, it, and it's the same six note away, flat fifth, augmented four or augmented 11 as top to bottom, bottom to top. So whether I measure one way or the other way, because we're on the same position in the circle, right in the middle of the circle. So then I can say, okay, I have a third right here. So I could say, and notice again, if I think of this as my shape, this would be my D shaped E major from a cage system. And then I could just shift back my fifth. So now I'm taking that B back. That's practical. I like it. I like it a lot. I'm going to say, uh, then I have a third up here. So I could say, and then I'm looking for it's this one. Is that, wait a sec, what is happening? I'm looking for the, uh, I'm like brain dead right now. I don't know what is going, I don't know what is happening. I go here, here, and then here. No, here. Oh my goodness, what is wrong with me? I see what happened. I'm, I was sitting on the F. Man, I'm going to have to stop soon. So, hopefully I haven't messed up too badly before this. Now I'm worried. I need to go check. No, practice session. If I messed up, you're just going to have to deal with it. But you messed up. Practice session. Practice session. You're showing us the wrong thing, practice session. Okay, okay. Uh, let's go here. <laughs> this is gonna be five, 10, nine, eight, seven, six. So from here, uh, six to here. So we're on the D string right there. Yeah, that sounds right. All right, what else can I do with that? I've got a, uh, a third back here. So maybe I can do, I can reach like that. A bit awkward. It's more than a bit awkward. That's 
Uh, let's see what else I got. I've got a fifth right there. So boom, boom, boom. Still, a little can't really do that too well. Kink of the tuning's kind of throwing that off. Let's see what else we got. I'm kind of getting tired here. I might have to stop, but I got one more string to go. I need to get it. I want to get it done today, man. It's not helpful if you're so your brain's so dumb you can't understand. Whatever. Sometimes you just, sometimes you just go through the motions, man. All right, that's how you gotta. Do. So then we're gonna go here. Wait a second. Five six. So that is kind of interesting because I have a third right there. So I could like bar this off to some degree. That's weird. <laughs> Cause I'm trying to reveal. Now wait a second, yeah. Or I could play it this way and try to mute everything else. Isn't that easy to do? I could throw in my pinky there to pick up that 13. All right. I also have the fifth back here. So that's an unusual way to do it. So again, I'm going to try to put, I'm going to pick up the seven so that, so I'm picking up this seven and then I'm muting the open D. It's kind of interesting. I haven't done that much when playing around. Let's do, then if I go down here, that's the one that's gonna be just six straight up, six notes, one, two, three, four, five, six, augmented 11. And so that's on the 11. And then I, every other note. can do with that. Let's go to the one below it. And now we're back to the normal shape. Six note away because there's no fault line between those two notes. So once again, in this case, my normal shape would be like this, the D shape down here for my E. And so then I could just be like, and that's when I add my pinky right there, which people probably do that all the time down here. We probably do it right here, but now we're adding up here. So if I'm like here, pretty okay uh, I have that and then I have this so I could say there's this and then I pick up this one which is just basically the same thing I was just doing that 
I was just doing that, dude. That's not new. That's not new. I've been here for years. Don't call it a comeback. I've been here for years. Really? You've been here for years? I've never even noticed you. What have you been doing? What have you been doing around here? It's like you're... No one even knows who you are, dude. No way, man. I've been here for years. Don't call it a comeback. I've been here for years. I fucking... Might as well not have been here because I can't, I can't even remember who you are. I... This is going to be... If I was here... So once again, same bottom to top, top to bottom uh, with that. So I have, if I'm on the bottom note, this would be my major construction. Normally from this shape. So if I played it like this, I can slide this note back. That's cool. That's useful. I'll put that in the bag of tricks. My bag of tricks. Uh, your tricks are lame. My bag has a lot of tricks in it. I'm really popular in Halloween because of my bag of tricks. I've got a, so let's, okay, that's cool. What else you got? Let's do this one up here. So that would be five. And then because of the fault line, 10, nine, eight, seven, six. So now we've crossed over the fault line. And this would be five, six, seven, eight on the G string. And I've got, so I could just grab this one right above it, which is the, this five right there. And I could move this out to grab that five double five and I could also shift from this third so here's my third out to this eight or diminished eleven so, so something's wrong with that. Five, six, uh, should be right here. There it is. I think I did that wrong. So there we go. So that's cool. Because I can go... I'm, I'm losing it. It, I don't even, I don't even know what it is anymore. I've lost it so much I can't even define it. That's not good. I like to be able to define stuff. Cause I'm sick of the deconstructivist defining things, and confusing people on purpose. That's not gonna help too much. I see you there, but I'm going to pass that one. And then we're going to go up here. So this one's going to be 5, 10, 15, 20. Well, let's do this one. It's 5, 10, 15, 15 minus 12 is 5 minus 2, which is 3, plus 5, 5, 6, 7, 8, 7, 6. Does that make sense? 
So we go here to this one. So what do I got there? I can add the five right above it. And then I can add the third right there. So that's interesting. Wait a second. I could bar up to the ten just to grab that, uh, which is a which is the seventh. Uh, what is that? No, that's a 13, just to get that in there. Or I can just... Alright, move on. I'm tired. Get it done. Let's just go to the next one. Just to see the last one. I can't reach that. I can't reach that. I'm just going to quit right now. I could do that. Yeah, but when would you want to? Oh no, that's not even it, dude. Alright, so I'm gonna stop right there. I'm gonna stop it right there.